In doing this show and rewatching all the movies, it would be inaccurate to say that I hate absolutely everything about them. That would be like saying all children are potential rioters and should be put up the mines or back in the chimneys where they belong so we don't have to deal with them smashing up the place again. Disney movies aren't all Snow White, that's for sure. That stated, I do hate everything about the man himself. Walt Disney once said, We keep moving forward, opening new doors and doing new things because we're curious and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. But Walt Disney also once said, God, I hate those Christian baby murdering Jew fucks. And don't even get me started on the blacks, Chinese, and midgets. You want to talk racism? I'll give you racism. What do you mean you just asked me for the time? You know who controls time? cock farting Indians, that's who. Where are you going? You know who leaves a shit spunking conversation while it's still going on? Communists. That's who. Gay, horse-wanking communists. That's entirely unrelated to Dumbo, but it felt like it was a good introduction for those unfamiliar to the series, especially seeing as due to Walt Disney's predilection for racism, this entire episode will be narrated in the style of one of the crows from the movie, by which I mean it will very probably come off as being incomprehensible and inside out. Think Yoda, but black and poorly educated. Oh, now to this here movie. This now flicker box does open with some babies being a maid. Bow chicka wow wow, I hear you say, but you would be most ever entirely wrong now, my friend. Disney, in this here sequence of what some might call events, is done to an ill informing of the children of yesteryear. The babies do not come from a fucking but in and out from a stalks, you hear. This crow speak isn't working for me at all. I'm gonna give up and talk properly, and by properly I mean British. The question is, where do stalks get the babies? Do they have laboratories set up for IVF? Doubtful. They don't even have opposable thumbs, let alone hands. Have you ever given a test tube to a bird? I assure you, he's less likely to grow a baby and more likely to eat it, cutting his own throat open, bleeding out and dying in your garden, leaving you to dispose of the body when you should be writing the next episode you started doing research for. Hypothetically, of course. This experiment can only lead to one logical conclusion, that storks are stealing the babies from happy couples and relocating them to unfit parents who have not been allowed to have children of their own, whether by sterilization or just because God hates them. The next day, the circus packs up. The circus, by the way, is called the WDP Circus. In case you're slow or special, that's the Walt Disney Production Circus. As in the Disney minions going, Working here is like a circus, we're so crazy! <laughs> in a self-referential globule of spunk that I'm sure had the sycophantic twat fumblers laughing in the aisles of their drawing boards. Meanwhile, we discover that the carnies don't seem to notice that new babies have just appeared in pretty much every animal cage. Which is fair enough, I barely notice when my cat's around, let alone when he brings friends over for tea. Turns out the stork in charge of delivering Dumbo is the worst child abductor and relocator of all time, not only failing to deliver on schedule, but almost losing the child in the process. We also learn that the baby's being delivered to Mrs. Jumbo, which means the baby's name is Dumbo Jumbo. That kid's not going to get bullied at school. This stork is all about procedure, it seems, whereas the others just drop the babies from fairly high up in the sky, he insists on getting Mrs. Jumbo to sign in triplicate for the delivery. Where's Mr. Jumbo through this movie? I imagine the stress of his wife insisting they have a baby was too much for him and he took his own big fat elephant life. 18 minutes in and we meet a kid who looks not unlike the annoying cunt from Pinocchio who befriended Woodface before they were both molested by the coachman and turned into donkeys. I imagine this is before he was a donkey and possibly the reason he was molested. The ringleader seems to take quite a fancy to the boy and as part of the grooming process whips Mrs. Jumbo and has his minions tie her down. We all know how that kind of thing turns a young boy on and makes them ripe for the raping. That's why priests have started installing elephants in churches, in case you're wondering what that was about. What is it with Disney and tiny talking animals who are meant to help the protagonist along but end up being fairly useless? In Dumbo, we have a mouse in some kind of military garb. Is he in the mouse army? How does he know that the kid's called Dumbo, and are we meant to take these things as given and not ask questions? You know what happened the last time people didn't ask questions? We got Windows Vista and the Holocaust. The nameless mouse soldier acts like Dumbo's agent until he gets distracted. Climax! Climax! He shouts at the newly born elephant who has no idea what's going on but seems worried about where Sergeant Mouse's hands are below the frame. Colonel Mousington seems to notice this and runs away to finish his business elsewhere. Probably for the best, public masturbation is generally frowned upon, especially in front of minors. Detective Mouse P.I. goes on to pretend to be, and I'm quoting, the ringleader's subconscious. This is, I'll remind you, after the previous movie they released featured a pint-sized conscience. As Disney running short of ideas four movies into their feature filmmaking career? The answer is yes. Once again, Inspector Mouskowitz's mind is stuck on one train of thought as he whispers in the sleeping ringleader's ear. A pyramid of elephants is standing in the ring, waiting to climax. You are now getting that climax. Suddenly, from the sidelines comes your climax. It's not just me, right? He's telling the ringleader to wank into the circus tent, specifically onto the elephants. Either way, it works, because the ringleader wakes up with a jump and knows exactly what he needs to do. They manage to train the elephants to stand in a pyramid pretty fucking quickly. 
Maybe elephants naturally pyramid the same way flamingos stand on one leg and giraffes are nature's helicopter pilots. All this is great, but the elephants don't seem to know the difference between a pyramid and a tower. They said they were going to pyramid and they towered. If I was seeing the show, I'd want my damn money back. Especially seeing as the tower collapses fairly fucking swiftly and several patrons seem to have died in the process. Of course, Dumbo gets blamed for this shit. The big top falling, the thousand that died, one of the elephants spraining their tail, it's all his fault. Not the fault of the ringleader who thought you could balance six elephants on a beach ball. The other elephants decide that from now on, he's no longer an elephant. Except that they're entirely incorrect, you don't just stop being an elephant. The big fucking nose, the ears, the weird circular feet. No amount of reassignment surgery can fix that. Dumbo, who's still an elephant, is painted up like a whore and employed as a clown. They'll let elephants do anything these days, coming over here, stealing our jobs. The ringleader obviously doesn't have much care for health and safety because he follows the elephant apocalypse by having live fire in the big top and puts Dumbo in the centre of it. I'm beginning to think that he's the supply ringleader filling in while the actual ringleader is on sick leave. Dumbo seems pretty sad about being a success, I think he might be a manic depressive. Admiral Roden tries to cheer him up by encouraging him to comfort eat. The kid's probably borderline obese as it is, and Dr. Mouse MD seems to be trying to push him over the edge. As a doctor, this seems ill-advised to me, but what do I know? I bought my doctor on the internet. Time for a musical number! Except this is no ordinary musical number, by which I mean it's a shit musical number! I'm pretty sure it's been said before, but I'll say it again. I hate a lot of shit, but I love musicals. I love musical numbers, however, I like them being of the good variety. Disney has a long fucking history of turning everything into a spunk gargling musicals, and in some rare cases it's good. For example, I Want to Be Like You is a great track. Unfortunately, that's not in this movie. Instead, we have some whiny song about love or something that I totally don't give a flying circus spunk about. Someone should travel back in time and bitch slap Disney for lying to children about alcohol. I almost had post-fetal probably toddlerish alcohol syndrome from drinking trying to trip out after seeing the elephants on parade sequence as a kid. Although in retrospect, the chorus of the song is Pink Elephants on Parade. And while there are elephants of every colour of the fucking rainbow, only a handful of those elephants are pink. What I'm saying is that Walt Disney is a monkey-raping, child-slavery-supporting, card-carrying, Nazi, frozen-headed, lying motherfucker. That aside, the drinking trip results in Dumbo and Mouse Guy ending up in a tree. I'm gonna assume that elephants with their stupid round feet can't climb trees. They don't even have toes, just stupid tubular legs that stop at the ground. Well, now I come to think about it, everyone's legs stop at the ground unless your legs are in the air or you're in a hole. Which brings us to my favourite characters, the racist crows. Not that the crows in themselves are racist, though they are a bit, but specifically that the crows are portrayed as racial stereotypes of the blacks. Now, I don't really get racism. When I was a kid, I must have watched this a gazillion times, and this, along with the pink elephant sequence, were my favourite parts of the movie. Sure, I equated the crows with darkies, as Uncle Walt intended, but they were fucking hilarious, smart and manipulative. In short, they were my favourite characters, and from then on I wanted a collective of black crows, sorry, people, as friends. Very difficult to achieve in an all-white preschool, and attempts to interact with sporadic black people on the streets of London whilst aged just a few years above fetus level resulted in panic by my parents as I wandered off, followed by confusion from those I approached talking in child crow speak. In short, Disney fucked me again. Not literally, although I was a pretty hot toddler if I do say so myself. He'd have totally wanted to violate me senseless with his shriveled, useless old man cock, had he not died some 20 years previous. The rest of the plot plays out as follows. Magic Feather, Flying Elephant, I've been down seen about anything when I see an elephant fly, and so on. Dumbo gets his revenge on the clowns who dressed him up like a broad and sexually humiliated him. What we learn from this is that you must always be vigilant of those with special needs. Dumbo, I might remind you, is a mentally spasticated mute, and if this movie teaches us anything other than drugs are great and black people are awesome, it's that we should always be vigilant of the slow. Sure, they might be fun to laugh at for their various tardations and spazoid ways, but one day they will find their magic feathers and each of them will become more powerful than we can possibly imagine. As we all know, they're already immune to bullets and fire. What happens when they start flying around shooting peanuts? We lose, my friends, we lose. This world will no longer be ours, it will be Planet of the Tards, and there's absolutely no coming back from that. Before you know it, you'll be on a beach shouting, You maniacs, you blew it up, and then you rubbed your face on it and licked it. You're still licking it now. What the hell? God damn, what the hell? The end. Uncle Walt died to us. What a fucking cunt. Has proven down his dear's knee. Deconstruct. He raped our minds and our childhoods. We've exposed his lies for the better of good. That racist rapist kid and fiddling cocko may be dead. But that don't mean we can slap him upside the head. See you next time, folks.